Hi, I'm the Fairy Godmother, and I'm going to read to you about the cat who made her master into a prince, taken from the original story Puss in Boots. Once a miller left his three sons a mill, a donkey, and a cat. The eldest took the mill, and the second the donkey. The youngest had only the cat. The poor young fellow was quite unhappy with his poor lot. My brothers, he said, may do well by joining together. But I only have a cat. I must die of hunger. The cat, who heard all this, said to him, Do not be sad, my good master. You need only give me a bag and a pair of good boots made for me, so that I may scamper through the brambles. You shall see that you have not done so badly as you imagine. The cat's master had often seen him play clever tricks to catch rats and mice. He would hang by his feet or hide himself in the meal, the ground meal, for bread, and play dead. So the lad did not lose all hope of being helped. When the cat received the boots, he pulled them on with a grand flare. Then he put the bag about his neck and held its strings in his two forepaws, and went out to hunt for rabbits. He put bran and lettuce into his bag and stretched out beside it as if he were dead. He waited for young rabbits who had not yet learned the tricks of the world to crawl into the bag and eat what he had put there. Scarcely had he laid down when he gained what he wanted. A foolish young rabbit entered the bag. Puss drawing closed the strings very quick and captured him. Proud of his catch, Puss carried it to the king's palace and asked to speak to his majesty. He was shown into the king's rooms. Making a low bow, the cat said, I have brought you, sir, a rabbit, which my noble lord, the Marquis of Carabas, that was the title Puss was pleased to give his master, has commanded me to present to your majesty from him. Tell your master, said the king, that I thank him, and that his present gives me a great deal of pleasure. Another time the cat hid himself in the cornfield, holding his bag open. When a pair of partridges ran into it, he drew the strings, and thus caught both of the birds. He gave them to the king as he had given him the rabbit. The king received the partridges happily and ordered some money be given to Puss. The cat continued for two or three months to carry game to his majesty. One day when Puss knew that the king was about to drive along the river with his daughter, who was the most beautiful princess in the world, <laughs> He said to his master, If you will now follow my advice, your fortune is made. You have nothing to do but wash yourself in the river. I shall show you where and leave the rest to me. The Marquis of Carabas did what the cat advised without knowing why. Have you ever done anything for your parents when they asked you and you didn't understand why and you just did it anyway and it all turned out good? While he was bathing, the king passed by. The cat began to cry out as loudly as he could, Help! Help! My lord Marquis of Carabas is drowning. At this, the king put his head out of the coach window. He saw that it was the cat who had so often brought him such good game. He told his guards to run at once to the aid of the Marquis of Carabas. While they were dragging the young man out of the river, the cat came up to the king's coach. He told, he told the king that his master was washing in the river, and some robbers had run off with his clothes. 
The Marquis had cried, thieves, thieves, several times, but no one had heard him. Actually, the clever cat himself had hidden the new, the clothes under a great stone. The king commanded his men to run and fetch one of his best suits for the Marquis of Carabas. The fine clothes suited the Marquis, for he was well built and very handsome. The king's daughter took a secret liking for the Marquis. When he cast two or three respectful and tender glances upon her, she fell deeply in love with him. The king invited the Marquis of Carabas to come to the coach and take air with them. I think that means take a ride. The cat, overjoyed to see his plan beginning to succeed, marched on ahead, meeting some farm workers who were mowing a meadow. He said to them, Good people, who are you mowing for? If you do not tell the king that the meadow you are mowing for uh, belongs to the Lord Marquis of Carabas, it will not go well for you. I will make you very sorry. The king did not fail to ask the mowers to whom the meadow belonged. To my Lord Marquis of Carabas, they answered. The cat's threat had made them terribly afraid. You have a fine place, said the king of, to the Marquis of Carabas. Yes, replied the Marquis. This is a meadow which always gives a good harvest. The cat, still running on ahead, now met some, some reapers, and he said to them, Good people, you who are reaping, if you do not tell the king that this corn belongs to the Marquis of Carabas, it will not go well for you, and I will make you very sorry. The king, who passed by a moment after, wished to know to whom that corn belonged. To my lord Marquis of Carabas, replied the, the reapers. The king was still more impressed. The cat, going on ahead, said the same words to all he met. The king grew astonished at the vast lands that, uh, owned by the Marquis of Carabas. Puss came at last to a stately castle. The master of this was an ogre, the richest ever known. He owned all the lands which the king had been riding through. The cat had taken care to find out who this ogre was and what he could do. He asked to speak with him, saying smoothly that he could not pass so near his castle without paying his respects. The ogre received him as politely as an ogre could and made him sit down. I have been told, said the cat, that you have a gift of being able to change yourself into any sort of creature you can, for example, turn yourself into a lion or an elephant. That is true, answered the ogre roughly. To prove it, I shall now become a lion. Puss was so terrified at the sight of a lion so near him that he at once leaped out on the roof, and not without trouble or danger, because of his boots. These were of no use in walking upon the smooth tiles of the roof. A little while later, when Puss saw that the ogre was no longer a lion, he came down and admitted that he had been very much afraid. I have been told also, said the cat, but I cannot believe it, that you have the power to take on the shape of the smallest animal. I have heard, for example, that you can change yourself into a rat or even a mouse. I must say, I think it, this is impossible. Impossible, cried the ogre. You shall see. The ogre then changed himself into a mouse and began to run about the floor. Puss instantly fell upon the mouse and ate him up. Ah, I want you to see the picture. Meanwhile, the king, as he passed the ogre's fine castle, desired to go into it. 
Puss heard the noise of his majesty's coach running out over the drawbridge. He ran out to, and said to the king, Your majesty is welcome to, to this castle of my lord Marquis of Carabas. What, my lord Marquis? cried the king. And does this castle also belong to you? There can be no finer than this court and all that surrounds it. Let us go in, if you please. The Marquis gave his hand to the princess. And followed the king who went first. They passed into a great hall where they found a magnificent feast. This the ogre had prepared for his friends. They were very, that very day to visit him, but now they dared not enter knowing the king was there. His majesty was as charmed with the Lord Marquis of Carabas as his daughter, who was so much in love with him. The king said to the Marquis, it is only for you to say, my lord Marquis, whether you will be my son-in-law. The Marquis, making several low bows, accepted the honor which his majesty had offered. That very day, he married the princess. Puss became a great lord, and he never ran after mice anymore except for fun. <laughs> Thank you for listening.